sleep, gotta build There's a ground that needs to be drilled And all I wanna do is dig From the Dead Workers Party A podcast about all things Minecraft Enjoy your stay in the shaft the Shaft, episode 147, recorded on August 30th, on August 30th, 2013! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brent Copeland. I am Wes Wilson. And I'm Eric Fools. I mean, I'm Silas. <laughs> And we got a special guest today. That's Silas from Silas TV. What's up, brother? How's it going? Uh, How you doing? I'm doing good. And you don't mind all our craziness tonight, I see. Yeah, we feed off of each other. Normally, we would have some background music playing, but I pushed the button too many times. Yeah, this is first <laughs> first time Wes has had have to do this yeah. because Eric left us high and dry. I know. I know. And and Eric would be here to like take control of things, but he's over schmoozing in Atlanta yeah. at the Con of Dragons. Yes. Hopefully he doesn't get eaten by any dragons. Maybe he'll eat some dragons. That would be pretty cool. Dragon. But dinner. he's over hanging out with a bunch of Twitch folks too or Twit folks too. That's true. Like he's over there with Brian Brushwood and OMG Chad and having a good time and I saw him drinking drinks with Daryl Hazelrig. Yeah. That guy. That guy. He's trouble. He is trouble. Yeah, so man. Eric will probably never make it back. I know. He's never coming back, just so everybody knows. From now on, it's just me and me and Brent. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'll live. <laughs> Stuck on a survival island. I'll live. Exactly. Yeah, that's how it goes. But anyway, Silas, it is so good to have you with us, uh, mostly because Eric isn't here. Well, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you having me here. <laughs> I'm still in the space. Don't be afraid to speak up when you got something to say. And and the first thing we want to say is uh, thanks for making all your channels easy to find because you use the same name everywhere. I like that. So, I try to do that. I try to do it good. So you can head on over to YouTube.com slash Silas. That's S-I-Y-L-I-S-S. And it's the same on Twitter and on Skype. Do you uh, And you stream on YouTube and not Twitch. Yeah, and there's plenty of reasons for that. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about some of those beforehand, but let's talk about the positives, not the negatives. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, can I just say something real quick? I remember listening to your episodes, probably, I think it was like probably 20 or 30, about a couple years ago when I first started my old job that I don't work at anymore. And I was listening to it, and I was just working. I was like, you know, someday I want to be on that show with those weird guys. So, Well, it's you know, good. Yeah. And if you put your mind to it and you work hard people you too one day could be <laughs> weird <Skype> like us <laughs> and be Gosh, forced to yeah. talk to us for an hour <laughs> but only if you work hard yeah keep your nose in them books if you're not gonna do it then don't don't buy in i don't know or just play <laughs> minecraft and do some videos yeah do yeah awesome and videos. be funny being funny helps a lot it does help yeah being goofy funny do you feel like you're a funny person silas uh I don't know. I just feel like I just like to be normal and act. I like making people laugh. So I guess just, I don't like try to do it on purpose, but I just, I just I like, like no, wait, I just want to get, I like to make people laugh, but I don't do it on purpose. Is that what you just told me? <laughs> yeah, I have a skill. <laughs> that's, that's true skill right there. <laughs> Right, Silas? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and you have many skills. You're also an, an artist. You do some uh, uh, drawings. Uh, you do those live, right? Uh, actually, for the sp the artwork and stuff like that, um, I just I draw those. I re pre-record it, and then I take them and speed them all up in editing, and then put music to it, kind of like a speed art. So okay, so you don't stream when you're drawing? I don't or? stream artwork live, but I do stream live as far as open lobbies, gameplay, and stuff like that. Is that something you, you've thought about doing? Yeah, it is, actually, but I just never did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there's an answer. That I'm sure you guys have had over the years. It just doesn't happen, you know. But one day. One day. All that we dream will come true. Maybe I'll do a live stream of me drawing you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. We need all the drawing. fan art we can get. Like It'll I watch go in the uh, front uh, pre-roll. Exactly. The art there. And I watch, you know, uh, Basher posts a lot of his fan art and he calls it Bash Fart. Yeah. Bash yeah. fan art. And it's and it's kind of awesome. And like I'm like, you know, don't get me wrong, Basher's freaking awesome, but wow he gets a lot of fan art. So I'm active I mean, we've gotten some and some really good ones, by yeah. the way. 
Uh, I actually made some of the fan art that I got my uh, Twitter header lately. Nice. Uh, nice. But uh, but yeah, so we're we're actively soliciting fan art, um, and and we'll start with yours, Silas. So we're going to spend the next hour and have you draw really beautiful pictures of us. Okay. How's that sound? Go. Oh, that that what a privilege. <laughs> <laughs> What an honor. So, <laughs> speaking of honor, honor, I'm honored that we have some sponsors this week. I am as well. Because we've switched everything up on everybody. We used to uh, just have this form that people filled out uh, in PayPal, and, and we had some beautiful donors who would donate 10 bucks uh, an episode and or 25 if they were a website. But now we switched to our, our engine website, and it actually works along with our um, server, Minecraft server. So if people... Uh, donate. They actually get a, uh, a sponsor message on the server. But we also added in two new things this week. One is you can actually, if you don't care about having a message on the air, you can just sign up for like a monthly donor. Thing. Oh, uh, and that's on the same page. You that's can just good. Go to deadworkers.com slash sponsor. And it should take you to the proper place. Uh, but we also added in the ender chest. And this is an idea a good friend of ours uh, suggested we do because we never really like once we're actively streaming uh, we, we don't really take donations but we do now uh, and you can just actually uh, it's it's in the video itself but you can just go to I'm raising dot com slash DW party and uh, if you donate there it will actually flash a message up during the stream really it should <laughs> in all theory it should happen magically. theoretically Magic will happen. I have it set up that magically <laughs> that admits. should happen. And then it will be in the video, too. And it will nice. be, it should post whatever <laughs> message you post. <laughs> Doesn't say so, color. It just appears. Yes. Don't make edit or don't make Eric do too much editing <laughs> or since he's not here, do. <laughs> yes, Eric will not be editing this episode. So all your lascivious statements will end up on the video at the end. So and that's the ender chest. Yes. Uh, so the inner chest is now so <laughs> many ways that you can. Anyway, let's get back to those beautiful uh, bean sponsors. This week we have a uh, a few here. We got some. In oh, someone took care of the. I did. There. I fixed it. Thank you. The first one here is from Chicky Master, who says, "I went to Sweden and saw Mojang, and it was awesomeness." So they sponsored to rub it in. I know. That's Thanks. awesome. We have never been there. We're so glad you made it and not us. You made it. And then Lion Song, who uh, says, Visit my shop at Spawn. Turn right before the Rainbow Cave. It's the Brick House. I have food and blocks. Nice. Sure do I guess that. that's on the Shaftlands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a random server. Just go to any yeah, server. Any <laughs> server and visit my shop at Spawn. You know, turn right before the Rainbow Cave. And if you don't um, see it, move on to the next server pixel. and try again. <laughs> right. Pixel and Hive server. You just go in there and hide and seek, and he's right there. Yeah, exactly. And Lion Song's actually in chat. Says yes, yes, it is. So on the shaft, Lion. <laughs> this next one we'll have to do. Uh, I'll do the second part. Okay. Uh, you'll you'll see where to stop. I think. But it, okay. uh, this one is from Silent Sam Five. And this is a server sponsorship. He he paid twenty five bucks. I know. Tips. Yep. And he and and uh, everybody who does a server sponsorship gets in the show notes. And he says, "I would like to apologize for my last message, Ghetto Toaster. I wouldn't think of anything good after pressing. Pay. I couldn't think of anything good after pressing pay now. <laughs> Oops! I nearly dropped my pop." <laughs> I think I had an ant crawling on my leg. That, that doesn't really. It was, that was a horrible. That English was the accent, worst it? English accent. I Howdy, got down. <laughs> now it's like just going downhill. Oopsie! I, I, nearly I, I can't my do pop. it. I I think he. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's it's bad. Really, you I, should you should nearly, regret. You should regret all that. Oops! I nearly dropped my pop. <laughs> it's a redneck in England. Speaking of regrets. Our journey. Our journey. Yes. Our journey. And I do want to um, throw out uh, just a shout out to Lego Clone 123. Welcome to your first stream ever of the Shaft. Sweet. Is your first stream ever, Lego Clone? First stream. Is that wrong nice. to do that? We're going to get more of those, aren't we? Yeah. Anyway, uh, our journeys this week. I got big news. Really? Yes. Brent Copeland, season three. <gasps> 
What? You mean at Brent Copeland? At Brent Copeland season three. <laughs> I, I recorded. I don't, even, I don't even know what Brent Copeland is anymore. I think it's all at Brent Copeland, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but season three, I started it, recorded it, have the first episode, just have to edit it, and then it'll go up on the site, and then I will continue I from there. I've been. I've actually been wanting to do some more streaming lately, and some more recording, and like you know maybe like put something on the channel of worth that I'm responsible for. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um, someone just put some money in the Ender chest. And apparently, nice. he did put their message up there. I, oh, oh fail. no! Oh you guys no! You should seriously make the same noise that Enderman makes every time you look at him and hit him. Wow! Yeah, that weird. Yeah. <laughs> every time they put something in the chest. But I got a fix for this live on the air. Go on, Wes. You keep talking. So anyway, so like I have um, been wanting to stream, and and like I don't know, I don't know how many people know this, but I have a, a five month old baby. And uh, eventually, I figure that I'll just ignore it when it cries, and then I can run some games again. Does that sound good? That does <laughs> sound good again. <laughs> that was from Afro Monkey. <laughs> and for those who missed the pre-show, that will make no sense whatsoever, but I'm an angel, and you won't forget it. Yeah, you forgot the first part. <laughs> 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 so anyway, uh, other than that, I actually have not been playing much Minecraft this week. I've been a little busy. I've been playing a lot of Fez. I've been playing a lot of Smite. And if you want to, you can go listen to Dead Workers Party on Smite. Plus, we started a new podcast called Dead Workers Party uh, on Seven Days to Die. And I, I tried out Seven Days to Die and went and joined um, uh, some uh, RP Gamer 99 in the fort he built in this one city. And other than that... I have not played any Minecraft. It's terrible. How dare you? I'm a bad person. How about you? Who, me? No, Brent. I, oh, okay. I, at, I started Brent at Brent, Brent Copeland season three. Really? Huh? How do you feel about that? <laughs> is it a totally new map? You know, it is a totally new map. I um, started over, and I'm doing some different things this time. A, I'm uh, on a single play world which okay. I don't normally do. I usually do multiplay. But I, I really didn't want to be distracted by everything that could go wrong on a multiplay world. And I wanted to be always up to date to whatever the latest and greatest is. Yeah. So it's 162. So I'll be looking for some horses soon. Nice. Um, some diamond armor. I, everything. Because the goal of Atbrin Copeland is to kill the Ender Dragon legit. Like, I've never done it i've never done it legit and so that's my goal in 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 Brent copeland uh the next season will be hardcore i'm not going to do it this one because i wanted to go back to this uh the other change i'm doing is i I'll, i will be trying out mods and um uh, resource packs so in the video i'll ask you to leave uh, comments on uh, which ones you want me to try out and so i'll be doing those kind of intermingled in but it won't be like using them all the time it'll just be kind of once over yeah thing each episode very nice. So uh, that was a lot of fun. That's so cool. <laughs> nice. You're like playing Minecraft. That's so awesome. <laughs> what is. about you, Silas? Have you been playing any Minecraft this week? I don't play that game. Uh, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been, uh, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. That's all I ever play. And um, I've been getting into Xbox Minecraft a lot lately, <laughs> Mr. Angel. And uh, <laughs> 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 waiting on the screen there. It's a little disturbing. <laughs> I've been, I've been getting into Xbox Minecraft mainly because of the TU12 update, and I've been doing a lot of news about it, but uh, I do a lot of open lobbies with my subscribers and stuff like that. They seem to like it a lot because they can't really download the maps themselves. Obviously, Xbox is a lot twerkier, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's just a little more difficult to handle. I it's a lot say. more twerk <laughs> to get things done on Xbox, huh? It is a lot of twerk. <laughs> but, uh, and then just, I think it was yesterday... I did my first ever Pixelmon on PC. I, I put the mod in for Pokemon on, on Minecraft. Yeah? And it was awesome. It was really cool. And I put a shader mod on. It was really nice. I just live streamed it for like an hour. I've been getting into live streaming a lot, but I just do it on YouTube now. Not going to mention anything else about <laughs> Twitch. Not anything else it could at all. You, it could get you into trouble. It could. <laughs> it could. I love them. I love them. No, really. I love them. I swear. So, like, are you? St have you? Have you been digging into a lot of other mods? Are you an FTB? Do you, have you done an FTB series yet? Doing an FTB series up to like sixteen episodes, and it just kind of like kind of fizzled out. Like now, a lot of people really kept up with it, and now what it's like so it, new. edit where it's just like I really didn't 
what made it fizzle out for you? I, I know what made it fizzle out for me. But what made- just, it was way too much stuff at once because I, I was basically just getting into all the different up, uh, updates for PC because I stood away from it for a while. Yeah. And so finally jumping into it again and then throwing in all the FTB stuff is just like, Ugh, there's way too much stuff, you know? Yeah. So I was, I was just getting used to all the different stuff they added as far as Redstone. See, you know, and I, I know why I quit. And, and the main reason I quit playing FTB is very simple, is that I wanted to do the things I was doing with other people and I couldn't coordinate it. And, and like, um, I, I really enjoyed everything I did in FTB, but like I ended up making things to benefit other people, but I wasn't ever playing with those people. And so I kind of, you know, like we could never coordinate our schedule. Well, well, it's not that it felt like work. It's that it's like, if I was going to poke around in that, it felt like I needed to be doing it hand in hand with other people. Right. Yeah. I think one of the hardest things as far as just where I'm at right now with the YouTube and stuff like that is uh, finding a group of people, kind of like how Minecraft have their group or the fridge or uh, the creature hub. They have like their own little group of people that actually know in person. For me, it's like not a lot of people around here, you know, have PCs that can handle games like that. So that's why I kind of went over to Xbox because a lot of people do have Xbox, you know. Right. And so that kind of opened up a, a different door, you know. And yeah. it also kind of gave me a new venue to, to be able to get different viewers on my channel. Um, but I would love to, you know, be in a group of people where we got together and played a bunch of games. <laughs> what, what are you laughing about? Do not, do not go to, t- to Twitter. Do not go to Twitter. <laughs> oh, goodness, why? <laughs> anyway, so... Um, but, yeah, no, no, I, I get what you're saying about uh, FTB because we were always waiting on each other to, hey, don't do anything yeah. with Mistcraft because we're going to do it together. Exactly. And then we never got together. And um, then we did, we did, we had the whole like um, Spellcraft stuff. Um, yeah. And we wanted to do that. And yeah. we, and then it was the like, oh, Thomacraft. Thomacraft. Yeah. Thomacraft. Thomacraft. Yeah. yeah. And, and we were like, we we're it's like, oh, we're right? going we're gonna to do this. And then we never did. And, yeah. and I, I, I think I get that way with a lot of games. Like I was playing Saints Row Three with Eric, and then he never would rejoin me, and I never, I never finished Saints Row Three. And like everybody's like, "Oh, that was the best game. You're an idiot, Wes." <laughs> and yeah, I am an idiot because I played with Eric. <laughs> the hell is I thinking? Hey, he's not here right now either. I know that guy. <laughs> he's probably playing Saints Row Three with somebody else. Yeah. Now at this very moment. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, I was going to throw something out there. Is it rare? Like, because I'm kind of new to the whole 1.6.2 update and the horses and all that stuff. Is it rare to find two gold armor horse armors in one dungeon? I that I just started 1.6.2, so I, I can't actually uh, tell you I, that. I, I found them. I was like, oh wow, this is cool. But I was playing the pixel mod, so I couldn't even use them anyway because there's no horses. Well, <laughs> d- well, and do you ride around on two horses at a time, or is it just like if one horse dies or something? Put some extra armor on him. Yeah. <laughs> on the bottom side. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> he jumps over a big log or down something. Down low. Down low. When you're in the nether. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, is there anything else you want to talk about, Silas, about what you did this week? Um, i just been really staying up to date with all the xbox minecraft stuff i don't know about you guys there's a lot of haters when it comes to playstation minecraft i don't know if you guys want to touch that that subject. doesn't that makes no sense to me like i can't imagine how anybody would be like oh that playstation minecraft it's total crap but i love mine uh, uh microsoft now yeah, where's <laughs> where's it hate on the like where's it coming from mostly like on I think forums it's just both sides like it's, i think the console wars is basically kind of spurring up a lot of the hate hatred uh, I'm the type of person which is like, can we all just be friends? You know, just play, <laughs> just play a game together. Just stop whining. <clears throat> can we? Can we all just get along? Why can't we be friends? <laughs> Copyright. Yep. Yep. That was bad. <laughs> Eric, I did it. <laughs> I know. It's all. It's all Silas's fault. But that's basically it. I just been. We're gonna go on from the Minecraft Daily news and updates. Do 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 do. Dude. No, none of that. No, Eric isn't here. <laughs> I'm dictating the doot dooting. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you know the best thing about the news? What's it the comes on the, the TV. News? And you know what else you can watch on your TV? What is that? Netflix! Yay, Netflix! So, if you want to get a free 30-day trial of Netflix, you can go to netflix.com slash deadworkersparty. And you'll support the show, and you'll get 30 days free of streaming Netflix. Nice. I have been watching Wilfred this week. And I don't know if you know what that show is, but it was it is an FX show about and it stars Elijah Wood and he uh, he is dog sitting his next door neighbor's dog, but he sees the dog as like a human being who talks to him. Oh yeah, I saw three years ago. And it is disturbing and crazy and wrong and awesome. It is season two is a work of art. Uh, season two just got put on a Netflix, and season one was a little too like so full of self loathing. But season two pulled back a little bit, and it is truly, truly amazing. I, I really recommend everyone watch Wilfred, if for nothing better, for season two. Huh. I'll have to check that out then. I never Wilfred. actually thought about checking that out. Like I see, I saw like ads and stuff like that on TV about it, but I just never really. It's it's. It. It's wrong. And the, and the best part about it is you're never quite sure if like like, like it almost seems like everything's going to be OK. But then there's hints that uh, Elijah Wood's character who's seeing the dog is totally and completely crazy. Uh, and it's awesome. Like there's just something really pleasant about that. Like so. That. <laughs> so, yeah. Season two, Wilfred on Netflix right now. Netflix dot com slash dead workers party. Go check it out. You know what I just watched on Netflix not too long ago? What? It was The Colony. The Colony? You know, yeah, it's a show. It's, it's, uh, it's it, basically a bunch of people they put into a scenario of a big, uh, almost like a big city that they cut off from all different people, and they set up different scenarios as if it was like a post-apocalyptic world. Not zombies, but, you know, just like, uh, almost like Bad Max. And it's a reality show. Yeah, it's a reality show. They see it's, how they act and, and what they do, what they build, you know, it, how they get out of it. It's really good. They actually have two seasons of it. Um, yeah. And I, I read an article. From, did you watch both seasons? I watched season one. I didn't get to watch season two yet. Uh, season two, there's like almost a mad scientist. This guy is brilliant. And I mean, they basically got to go around in this basically a post-apocalyptic world they set up in like you know bad neighborhoods where no one is you know yeah. and then they go so detroit stuff. is what you're saying they made it in yeah. detroit yeah basically <laughs> that's the sad part <laughs> these guys go around and find like the materials to make like solar panel systems to actually get electricity down and like heat up their water and, and that's do pretty it. cool and it's really crazy and then they send like these you know these fake like uh bandits to come try to steal their stuff and, and do some crazy stuff and like uh, people like try to come in and live with them and so it's like this it's this whole like it's really good i i uh i'm glad you brought that I up to watch season two it's yeah. uh it's well worth the watch also another show that's similar to that that you guys really need to check out if you like that is out of the wild that's as a discovery channel as well and that's the same type of same type of thing they put a bunch of people into the wild like like say Africa. They'll put them into the middle of Africa and they have to literally travel all the way to like this location that's miles and miles and miles away uh, over the course of like a couple weeks or whatever and see whoever nice. gets there. Nice. Pretty cool. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Deadworkers.com. Or, pardon me, Netflix.com slash Deadworkers Party. <laughs> I've only had two beers. Anyway, uh, so Dinnerbone has been teasing more 1.7 features. Over the past week, Dinnerbone has been showing off some of the new stuff that's going to be added in the Minecraft next version, and some of it is probably going to be pretty awesome. First on, you'll be able to use more than one resource pack at once and set their priority in a pack chooser window. Nice. And when conflicts arise, the ones which are higher in precedence will get preferred. So you could make a very small resource pack, give it really high priority, and that way you don't have to worry about there being holes in your resource pack. Right. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And this will uh, work great. So if you if there's like different mod packs or resource packs you like, one that maybe is just sounds, then you can pull those in and you don't have to worry about missing uh, any textures. Like now if you have ones, you'll have blank textures that won't have anything on it or a message. And now this just fills in all the gaps. Worst case scenario, you'll get the uh, um, the resources that came with the game. There's some pretty creative people out there that just kind of just show off the basics as far as the resource packs. They, they do some really nice little, you know, cinemas of it. 
you know what I mean? Like machinimas, where they showed off the different uh, different aspects of the resource packs, and it's really cool. <laughs> Don't look at Twitter. What is? What um, are you doing on Twitter? So the vo- <laughs> the volume setting is now going to be split into several categories. So it'll be a slider for music, weather, Good. blocks and environment, know. mobs, players, and records. Stupid rain. <laughs> Rain is awesome. Everybody just it's hates it, and it's just because they're haters. Umbrellas. Do you see uh, the new update that they're possibly making less oceans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're uh, they're working with the whole biomes, and uh, you know how we've talked about it in the past where he had maps where he, like I think I sailed for four hours straight in an ocean, and never hit yeah. land. And they're basically dealing with that and making it a lot uh, smaller, uh, better chance to not have big oceans. Yeah. Uh, I believe he I'm, was it Jeb or was it Dinnerbell? One of them posted a screenshot of like the before and after of what a, a world would look like, and the new one has a ton more biomes uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't see a problem with oceans, but like when it's like you see a little bit of land, and then all of a sudden there's another huge ocean right after that. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you I, find I, some land somewhere. I don't know. I kind of like <laughs> the idea of there being randomly huge oceans. Maybe it's just me. No, 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 I'm not saying no oceans whatsoever, random oceans, whatever. I'm just saying there's too many random oceans. Uh, yeah. I would like to see deeper oceans. <laughs> deeper oceans. Deeper. And then a reason for them to be deeper. Okay. Yeah, it's easier to twerk at the bottom. Yes, twerk. <laughs> twerk it all the way to the bottom of that pirate ship and get some booty. So also, you will be able to <laughs> clone it. written booty. books. Booty. <laughs> booty. <laughs> booty. 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 Twerk that booty. pirate booty. So you'll be able to clone written books, though not books that contain enchantments, using uh, any amount of the book and quill on the crafting table, along with the written book. And also there's an improvement on item frames. Hitting one containing an object will give you just the object. Uh, and if the item frame contains a named object, its name will appear above the item frame. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty, pretty cool. You know what? I, what I like that I actually added into one point six point two is holding shift and placing blocks on tables and stoves or furnaces, so you don't just open it up right away. I don't know if you guys knew that. No. <laughs> that silence. Hold shift and place a block on the chest, and it won't open the chest up on a new update. Oh, I did yeah. know that. that. That's actually now that's that's been old because yeah. you could put signs on chests and stuff if you held shift while you did it. I, I, I was just able to put them on a chest to begin with without holding shift, I thought. I don't, I don't remember being able to do that. If you if, if you were trying to put a sign on a chest, it would open it. It's a good thing this isn't a Minecraft podcast or anything. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> we will. Have you, are you talking about Xbox Minecraft? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> no, no, I was just playing PC Minecraft. Uh, we always I, take the word of the guest over ours. Oh, that's true. I'm yeah. wrong. I'm always wrong. This is wrong. Yeah, that's I'm always up. wrong. <laughs> So, Egmont UK's Minecraft books are surfacing in October and December. Word has arrived that Egmont UK will be launching about three Minecraft books, which can now be pre-ordered from their website. It's, you're going to see the Beginner's Handbook, the Minecraft 2014 Annual, and the Redstone Handbook coming out in December. Each will cost about £7.99. pence. That's heavy. I know. I don't know what that translates to American dollars. It's just heavy. Americans, start making some British friends fast. As mentioned in the previous episodes, Egmont's global distribution rights for, rocks for the books do not include the United States. Hey, we'll publish it for you somehow. Yep. We'll figure a way. Yep. I'm sure no one, no one at all Has will, offered. will create PDFs right. of these books. I mean, wait, what did I did I just say that? I'm sorry. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Wes. Egmont, get the deal. You're going to lose money. That's all I got to say. <laughs> that is true. That's all I got to say. True. It's it's better for Egmont. Yes. Get to twerk. <laughs> <laughs> so, something else that is cool. Uh, the Dead Workers Party is giving away a PlayStation 4. What? Nice. What? Saw, that's awesome that you guys would do that. Aren't those things like super expensive? Well, we're not giving away because we don't have the money to do that kind of stuff. But... <laughs> Uh, we teamed up with a, a group called Feature Points, uh, and basically what they are is a uh, they're an app on either the iPhone or, or Android, iOS or Android, where you can download an app every day, free apps, and every one you download, you get points that then you can use to basically buy 
uh, non-free apps, or you can actually buy like Amazon gift cards, uh, PayPal gift cards, even Steam wallet money, uh, and it's all free. Uh, and every person that signs up for it, we actually get a buck. So it, it's kind of cool for everyone to sign up for it. In addition to, uh, you could win a free PS4. And how you, how you do this is um, uh, the easiest way is just to go to um, uh, our site and look or uh, to Dead Workers On and look at the video. But basically, uh, you go over to points.deadworkers.com. You get the free feature points app. Download one free app out of it. And then go to our video, which will be in the show notes, and leave your referral code, um, which you can look in the notes on the video. They'll tell you how to find your referral code if you if you can't find it. I think it's under more rewards. I'm, I'm not positive about that. But just leave a comment under the video with your referral code and the name of the app you downloaded. And uh, we'll random it on the show on the 20th, I believe. It's a Friday coming up in a couple weeks. We'll random it live on air, and someone will win that PS4. It's awesome. Right. Yeah. Right, and, real quick, did you say a video response? No, no, no. You just have to leave a comment. Okay, because I was going to say, did you, I don't know if you guys knew this, but YouTube is actually taking out video responses next month. No, I didn't. Yeah, getting rid of it. That's Yeah kind of weird so just so you guys know for a future well and 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 actually i kind of read up on it and and the thing is like the amount of actual video responses is only like 0.004 percent or something ridiculous they're not killing a huge thing right it, it is good for a channel though like to kind of advertise your videos even if they don't click on it they at least see oh, okay this is another series to do maybe i'll watch it later yeah you know yeah i'm hoping they'll add in some other features to deal with that um, maybe setting preferred videos after your video's done, something like that. Yeah. Because I noticed in the uh, one of the latest updates that I didn't notice, they added in where you can add channels under your, your page, which helps out since we have multiple channels, it was kind of hard to point people to it. But now we can... Uh, and I just noticed that lately. It wasn't there when they first added the new pages, but it is now. So hopefully they'll add some feature to deal with that. But yeah, that, that kind of yeah. sucks. I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. We caught it. Did you also hear about Dick Clark? <laughs> <laughs> I heard something about that fellow. Yeah. I think he wanted some pop. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted something. I think he twerked too hard. I think, oh, goodness. <laughs> I think he wanted a... Time for <laughs> listener contributions. I think that's what he wanted. Oh, maybe. So I'll drop. Anyway. we do have a sponsor for listener contributions. It is Audible. And if you want to get a free 30-day trial of Audible, you can go to audibletrial.com slash the shaft today and get 30 free days of Audible. Additionally, you'll get one free download of over 100,000 selections. There's all kinds of other great things for you to check out there. If you decide to subscribe, you will get one free credit towards a book each month. Plus, you'll get 30% off all additional purchases. It is well worth it. Uh, you can ask Brent. He is lost in his Audible subscription in a bizarre way to the point where he's spending unnecessary money getting the things that he wants because he has no idea how to manipulate himself through the Audible system. <laughs> but, okay, I've been thinking about this. <laughs> because, see... If I paid the money, yes, which I actually did because they gave everybody an extra five dollars if you clicked on the link that went out in our Twitter. Oh, free five dollars! So you should have followed us. Um, uh, so I actually paid five bucks to get a, a book. So with that discount and whatever, I, I actually bought it and saved a credit. But that's actual extra money that I had to spend over yeah. my uh, thing, yeah, right? over my subscription. Uh, so I didn't actually have to do that if I used the credit. That's what I'm true. saying. That's true. That's uh, true. And if I wasn't subscribed, I wouldn't get it for ten dollars. So what you're saying is, if you're cheap, it's best if you just wait month by month and wait for the credits, right? That's exactly right. Okay. Just like most of us. Okay. Yes. I gotcha. <laughs> yes. I see what you're saying. And if here. you're not cheap, you know, get two subscriptions. Just make sure you go to audibletrial.com slash the shaft when you get that second subscription. Is there yeah. one for at Brent Copeland? Uh, no. <laughs> but I, when I first signed up for Audible, it was a long time ago. I mean, I've been a member with them like a long time. So long, in fact, that they were giving away creative 
You know who Creative is, made the sound cards. Yeah. They were giving away Creative MP3 players with your subscription. Nice. So you would get that and then be able to download it. And it was this cool little thing. I mean, it was the coolest MP3 player that I'd ever seen until, you know, iPhones came out or, or <laughs> iPods. Um, but, but yeah, so they don't do How that. How long was that? Uh, it was, I don't know. Was that during the brick iPods? How long have iPods been out there? 10 years. Has it been that uh, long? I don't want you to talk about how long it's been since iPads have been. I got around. my first one in. I don't want to hear about school. this. I don't want to hear about this. I don't want to feel that old. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. It just came out last week. Yeah, last week. That's about right. <laughs> That's so uh, this first message is from Maniac. Do you get it? Maniac. M I M A N I Y A C. Maniac. Anyway, hi, guy. Hi, all. Maniac here. Uh, just got this wet mo- West moment that I captured in the last call-in episode, and we'll provide a link in the show notes. It is me laughing and then giving a giving Brent a kind of you're on it kind of thing. You're on it. Yep. Now back to twerk, you naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read out some. So this next one here, I guess you want me to read, is from Hydrax. Sure. Who says, when is Paul Soros Jr. going to be on the shaft again? It's been ages since he last was on, and he has grown so much more popular since then. Love the show. Keep up the awesome work. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm going to have to look this up now. It but has been a while had him since he's been on, on a second time. Yes, we have. I think it was somewhere near episode 100. I think it might have been like around 110 or 115. I see fi- 54. Right. And I bet we had him on about a year later after that. I so see it's 15. We're due. We're d- He's been on 15. He was on 15. Episode 15. And 54. I think, I think I'm in 15 54. episodes. So I'm like, what? Wow. He's only been on twice. So that is. Wow. It's been a, it's been two years since he's been on. Yes. Yes. October 17th, 2011. We will get Paul Source Jr. back on this show because it's it's a travesty. Wow. Yeah, that's way too long. Yeah. I don't no. know why I felt like we had him on. Like Maybe it, it's because we saw him at PAX East. And because and he feels like such a good friend. I mean, he feels like he's next to us all the time yeah. in our hearts. He's, so, yeah, he's special. I, I will uh, actually uh, talk to him this week. He's right he's here with, with Eric right now. I know. Probably. If you'd like to get back on because we love Paul, so we definitely want to get him back on. He's a really cool guy. I got to meet him at PAX East as well. Just talked to him for a little bit. I swear we had him on around 100. I thought I we did too. I didn't think it was that long ago. I think we'll have to look at the uh, the wiki. The Yogg's cast has a wiki. Uh, wiki, the shaft. And they actually list all of our episodes and the guest on the wiki. Like, that's some hard working people, right? Uh, so he's definitely 54. I'm going to have to do a little search here. Paul, oh no, Paul, 15 and 54, 15, 54. 15, 54, 54. back and to the left, back and to the left. Now, the only thing I can think of is maybe he was on like 92 where we had multiple guests or 109 where yeah. we had multiple guests. Yeah. Or maybe after the Minecon 2 panel. Something like that. Anyway, so. regardless, we will pursue him. Don't talk about Minecon. It makes me depressed. <sighs> now, where do you live, Silas, if you don't mind us asking? I, I live in Nebraska. No, no. Pennsylvania. It, Pennsylvania. See, you're not that far from Oak, from uh, Orlando. That's you can make sucky. it down. That's only like 24 hours drive, I think. Isn't that? I, I know, but the thing is, I'm unemployed right now, so. <laughs> Have you thought about hitching? Yeah, but when I get there, what am I going to do? <laughs> Sneak in, dress up as Notch. I don't know. Have you have you seen us? We let anybody crash on our floors. <laughs> Bebop Bot, for band. instance. Yes, Bebop Bot cracks <laughs> our, crash on our floor at Minecon uh, 2011. Uh, right. Was it Minecon? No, E3. E3, that's E3. right. E3. Yep. Yeah. I would, and I seriously wanted to go to Play on Con. I seriously was <gasps> trying my best to get there and stuff like that. But you should. You should plan next year. Out. Next year. I know. Next year. As I get further into YouTube, I'm trying. <laughs> well, stop pointing. <laughs> I can't help it. It's it's it, it just is overwhelming. As I get further into YouTube, I think I'm going to try to make it more of a priority to to go to different things like that. It really it really changes the dynamic, and and really once you meet a lot of these people that you interact with online, it like changes. Like I mean, I feel like a lot of these people are my very good friends. They will definitely touch you the next time you see them. Yes. 
And if you're lucky, they'll give you a big smooch. And they might twerk for you. <laughs> <laughs> so our next one is from Minor Mate, who says, how do your parents slash guardians approve of support your hobby? And do they have the same feelings that they do now that they did back then? I ask this because my parents look down on my huge hobbies of gaming and in particular Minecraft. I've been limited to three hours a day on my computer, TV, or pretty much anything else that has a screen. It's rather depressing to me, but because I feel that my parents should support me and support what I like to do as hobbies. Uh, I would just just like to hear uh, if you all who have found your way to your current positions had the same issues. My family was actually, like, back when I was a kid, I was all about D&D. Uh, Because that's, you know, that's all you could do. There there were no such things as TVs or computers. We didn't get to play your silly video games. We we drew pictures on paper and rolled dice. Uh, And my my parents were actually very supportive of it. Now, I was lucky because um, I was in like the smart kid class and the smart kid teacher was like, no, D&D is a good thing. but and and there are actually lots of educational resources out there will that will that will say gaming and in particular video gaming is good for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, number one, it increases your hand to eye reflexes. It increases your memory memory retention. Uh, there's all kinds of great stuff out there if you look at the science behind gaming. So it's out there. Uh, I also recommend you dig into Joel Le- Joel Levin's Minecraft Teachers Minecraft.edu stuff and point out like some of the reasons why Minecraft is being used as an edu- educational tool. There is some really awesome stuff out there about how games can be used. If you really want to get super nerdy into it and your parents are like intellectuals pull out a lot of the gamification stuff there are big wide studies on gamification and the way that games can be used to inspire activities that otherwise might not have inspiration so that's what i recommend you do but on the whole three hours a day it's not too terrible yeah i've I've known people who have like a half hour a day (laughs) yeah (laughs) like only on a weekend and that's it you know yeah um i know for myself uh it really wasn't an issue just sitting and playing Xbox, the Xbox, real Xbox One. Um, <laughs> uh, playing that back when I was growing up and like all the other systems that I played growing up and stuff like that. It really wasn't an issue. My parents, you know, if they asked me to do something, as long as I did it, they wouldn't care how long I played games, you know. Um, but now that I'm married and stuff like that and I have a lot of responsibilities to take care of, uh, it really, you have to just, I think it's good to just keep priorities set in place and then. Once you get to play, then play good. <laughs> yeah. Play and hard. I, and I think there's a lot uh, about how you approach the discussion with your parents. Like, if you just um, throw a tantrum and go, <laughs> I want to play, I want to play, why don't y'all understand, blah, blah, blah. And you don't work to try to uh, help them understand where you're at. I actually grew up in a, in a pretty strict family, and at the time, I was really big into music. Like, I played in a band. And we thought we were going to be the shit. You know, we thought we were going to uh, make it big, get, get a record contract. Uh, you we guys were, were good. Well, and and we thought we were. My parents didn't support it at all. Yeah. You know, they, uh, um, I, I mean, absolutely no support, like, whatsoever. And so, it, you know, you grow up kind of... Um, with that uh, mentality, it it, uh, it didn't really help much. <laughs> no. You know, um, but you you... You've got to, if there's something you're really passionate about, um, you've got to show your parents that you're passionate about it and be aware that that may not be enough in the end. Mm-hmm. And you just got to persevere and realize that in, until you're 18, you, you've you got to kind of live by what they, they set. Yep. Um, but just remember, when you're 18, if that's your passion and you can figure out a way to do it without your parents' support, then go, go and yes. do it. And uh, do whatever you can to do that. Um, and there's a lot of angles you can take on this as well. Like, like you know... And that's d- a U.S. thing. I don't know in other countries, like, what, yeah. how old you have to be to... Yeah. But, but like, take angles on it. Like, I know that um, I, I have mentioned to, uh, like, parents of kids that I know that are interested in Minecraft and making YouTube videos. I'm like, look, get them into video editing. Get the, there are all kinds of really well playing, you know, well paying gigs that you can get from this hobby. Just pursue more than just the gameplay of it. 
Yeah. Not just that, but also different jobs you can you can get in the future where it's, it may not be a video editor, but if you know how to do that stuff, it can actually bump you up into you know before another person because they know that you can help them out with other projects and stuff like that, or uh, you kind of know your way around with stuff. Right, right, and that's that's a good good point y'all make is is show your parents that there's more than just the game. Like when my son started doing animations with the Minecraft stuff and showing me that, it was it was much more impressive than showing me the buildings he made in the game. Like, yeah, like it was still oh that's cool that you can make that, but showing an application outside of just hey I'm playing a game. Um, is it, very helpful and show them that Minecraft is is more than just a game in that aspect. That I mean, you're kind of lurking some uh, architectural things, uh, as well as uh, you know, take them to uh, what was it, Project Night eighteen twenty, the big Chinese. Oh, I can't uh, remember the Batori, year. Batori yeah. uh, runs it, but I mean, there's there's so much more stuff with Minecraft than than other stuff. So I, there is a way to to respect your parents, but also get your point across in a respectful way, just like any, any other situation. It's all how you, how they perceive what your attitude is, I believe. Yeah. You know, if, if they see that you're just being a brat about it, then they'll probably you know, just say no because they think that the game's causing you to act like that brat. But if if you're respectful to them, then they'll be like, oh, okay, I guess this is something they really want. Maybe I should use this as a tool to get some good behavior out of them. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And, you know, I have this issue in my house. My kids are on the computer, the iPad, or watching TV way too much way more than any sane parent would allow their kids to do and it's probably a lot to do with what i do uh and i in a way i think it's okay because i think it stimulates them in, in the right places that sounds really bad and <laughs> no it doesn't vanish no I, but, I don't i don't listen to your subtext but if your parents don't get that don't point to the shaft and say they get it <laughs> find some books that pertain to your hobby and say yeah. well Will y'all get me the? Because I will buy my kid any book they want. Like I have told them that from day one. As soon as they started reading, I'm like, if there's a single book you want, I will buy it. Because there's, to me, that's it's going to be a, a kind of forgotten kind of thing. Yeah. Eventually, and I think that's so great if they want to read. Um, and you can learn a lot uh, in books about what you're trying to do with your hobby, even if it's game development. Uh, or it's a programming language or something like that. Go that route, and um, uh, you know I think a your parents would then say, well maybe this isn't just a game. Yeah. You know. And like I said, uh, take take it and apply it in other arenas. If 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 you have some experience in music, take your interest in Minecraft and make songs. Original songs would be the best idea. Yeah. Uh, if if you're if you're if you're if you're interested in maybe going into making videos start digging into that show them look i'm going to take the way that i'm playing this game and i'm going to leverage it into an applicable skill that will get me a job somewhere just don't ask your parents to get you uh the book 50 shades of gray <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, there, there is a line there <laughs> there's a, a small line there but uh, uh, yeah okay so the next one is from daily dose uh, goes on to say, Brent, if Wes had an evil clone and you had them both held at gunpoint and they were trying to convince you that they were both the real Wes, what question would you ask them to prove which one <laughs> was real? Which one of us is real, Brent? What song did we sing while we were playing Warhammer Fantasy? <laughs> Milo Cyrus? Uh <laughs> Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> we built this city on rock and roll? Oh. I think it was rock and soil because we were dwarves. I think it was. Man. I know you oh, oh, I'm Damn. dead. <laughs> Boom I have shot. Been killed. Thought. I have been killed by by Brent and I, I am the real it. Wes. This is <laughs> bullshit. And I'm in jail. How do you think it feels for me? A clone's laughing at me. I know. He's he did it on purpose. I know. I know. Twerk Wes, twerk. I know. <laughs> I'm putting in here that I said shit in the show notes. <laughs> uh, let's just, I, I think those are safe words. <laughs> are you editing this episode? No. Oh, really? Am I doing it? <laughs> oh, no, we're going to make Eric do it, Eric. Oh, are we really? <laughs> it's penance. Okay, yes. Come back and do work. There you go. Right after that. So the last one is from Dick Clark, and it says, Who can twerk better, Wes or Brent? Wes. <laughs> I, no, Wes. according to Afro Monkey, no, that, that is messed up. Am an angel. 
at twerking? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, it all goes downhill from here. And it's a steep, a steep hill. X. Cavation station. So. <laughs> here we are. We're yes. at the bad place. Excavation station. Awkward silence. <laughs> I know. The first one comes from Breadloaf64. He says, there is a ch- it's called Underground Caverns, and this is what he'd like to see. There is a chance that a large underground cavern will spawn when you enter a new area. These could be up to 32 blocks high, and inside are vines on the walls, glowstone on the ceiling, and maybe small castles with spawners. So underground biomes. It seems similar to strongholds. I mean, strongholds yeah. are larger. Ravines. Like maybe a smaller. I've, n- I've a never come across a stronghold naturally, though. I haven't either. But I've really? never. I've had to look for it. I've, I've had to use the Ender Pearls to try to find them. Well, Xbox is a little different because <laughs> the maps are tiny. Fine. I, brag. Brag. Why don't you, Silas? Before. Just brag. Just, just do it. Well, to ignore them. Let me, let me get my list out of how many I found. <laughs> 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 he lost count. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my road Dex. So, uh, how many? Yeah, no, really. What's that I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think maybe, uh, I know in Terraria, there's an underground, um, like a hell world, almost, almost like the nether, but there's also another world that's like underground mushroom world, where it's like a big ravine co- covered in like huge mushrooms and small mushrooms. So maybe something like that. I, I, I like the idea of underground biomes. I don't mind underground, like more underground structures. I don't mind more underground spawners. I don't mind more underground, like big caves. I think all this is good stuff. Mm-hmm. I have no complaints here. What, what would you find specifically there, though, to make it a unique biome? Well, I mean, I would think that you would have to define it as kind of a biome to make it work right, right? I mean, like its own kind of soil and stuff. Maybe you see something different on yeah. top that hints to it being down there. Yeah. So, uh, should we ask Notch? A- absolutely. <laughs> Notch, what do, you, what do you think of this idea? Absolutely not. What? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. my God. He doesn't even like my ideas when I have control of the iPad. What so, the hell? All the hate. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with Notch on this one. God. We <laughs> renamed all the buttons so you'd do that. I know. I even pushed the absolutely, and I got absolutely not. This they is actually crazy. now all say absolutely not. <laughs> really? Is that what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next one here is submitted by Game Vigilante, who says, if you find a village... And leave it for a while. When you come back, the chunk will reload it, but the village would change. It would have bigger houses, more farms, and better items to trade. However, the longer you leave it, the village has a better percentage to be taken over by zombies. Has he ever played on a multiplayer server? Does he know what happens to villages like after a day? Gone. (laughs) They're gone. There's nobody left in them. If you visit a village in a multiplayer server and come back two days later, it'll be dead unless you have taken the time to defend those people. Yeah. Or, or maybe add to it where uh, there's different villages you could find that already have maybe structures built around it, like fencing and stuff. Yeah. I, I would like to see more of interaction with the villagers where it actually makes sense, where I they're trading for stuff, say, wood. And no, you're not getting a diamond sword out of it, but you're getting something comparable, uh, maybe even something that you normally make with wood. And so they're making it for you, but also then they can take these resources and actually use them in their village. So it's like as they buy stuff from you, they're actually upgrading their village and their village get grows and gets I bigger like that a lot from what you're doing. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then it really makes you want to interact with a village. Maybe they have more protections and maybe you can actually build a house in the village or buy a house or something I think like right that. now it's good to, it's it's nice that they have trading but I think it's almost some of the some of the trading is like just ridiculous yeah it's you know, stupid give me three emerald for a piece of bread yeah, yeah. And that's oh stupid. I like the best uh, give me X wheat for an emerald I'm like uh, hold up for one second <laughs> <laughs> and you just walk over to their farm and take their wheat. You don't even grow it back, right? You just take their wheat and pay them and then like stab them in the face and laugh and run off. But that's maybe just me. 
<laughs> I would do it. I, I can't imagine what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing that right now. But uh, but yeah, no, I I think that I think that's uh, having villages the ability to upgrade based on the trades you make with them is a very powerful idea, and I like it a lot. Mm. Notch, I think, I think that should be revamped for the next update. Notch, what do you think about this? Sure, I kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, make it happen, Notch. You, Sounds you have, like Notch says a lot of the same things over on this show. Yeah, well, he's kind of a simplistic guy. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, a few words. <laughs> So, uh, next is submitted by EWN2. This is color trim for vehicles and horses. What if you could mark out separate vehicles, boats, minecarts, bridled horses with dyed trim? Not a full paint bucket color change, but maybe an outline of a dye hue of your choosing. And would it help differentiate between horses and add a bit of color to your tracks, hubs, and docks? Yeah, some special hubcaps. <laughs> Get some low rider get carts some going. Get get some some what, what if you could crochet your own blanket out of uh, wool? Would that work? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, hi- and maybe hydraulics for your mine cart. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> What's working music in the background? No. Um, so, moving on. <laughs> okay, this last one here is from Jeff Darkfire. Who says, if your hung, hunger bar is high, you should smoke more reefer. Wait, no. If your hunger bar is high, you should do more damage than if it is low. This is kind of realistic. Plus, it would give a mini game such as the survival games more reason to get food. So he wants hunger-related attack strength. I don't know. Absolutely not. I, I agree, Notch. No. these are. This is a terrible idea. I mean, you you already get uh, you can't sprint right when you're low. Yeah, you can't so sprint. You kind of get some advantages anyway. You're hungry. You're going to be taking damage up. soon. Don't you're kick not, somebody when they're down. You're not getting hearts back as it is. Just don't kick them full. when they're down. We're already in big trouble. There's no need to make it so that I can't kill something that's attacking me. We, we already traded all of our wheat for emeralds. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and to make the villagers twerk. I know. <laughs> I, I have a serious, uh, a serious addition to this excavation station. Good. We were just about to ask you. Uh, I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sighting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. I know when I, when I want to build stuff, whether it's in creative or uh, non-creative survival. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that other mode. Hard when I'm work. up in the sky and I want to place a block, I need to build from the ground all the way up. This is annoying. Why not hold shift and it places a block four blocks away from you randomly in the sky? Hmm. You know what I mean? Expe- uh, maybe not in survival, but mainly uh, creative instead of building a huge tower to where you want to build from. I, okay. I could definitely see something like that in creative. Uh, Cre- OP and, and creative uh, mode, you can place blocks directly in front of you. If like you hit four shift away or something like that, automatically. Well, there, I mean, if you're in creative mode, you can fly. So why do you need it four blocks away? I guess, or, or even just a command to place a block in a random spot, you know, yeah. just to build from. Or, or what if they did this? Like the block that you have selected in your toolbar, it actually has it physically in front of you, so you can see where it's going to be placed. And when you hit your click, it places it there. Okay, the initial first one. So then you can switch between blocks and you can see exactly where you are. I mean, to yeah, me, that would actually help in aiming sometimes. And my yes. aim's not always the best when I'm building. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I'm just in the mood to create maps and stuff like that. And I want to build like an island up in the sky or whatever. So yeah. it gets a little annoying having to build, you know, 100 blocks high and then chop them all. Ooh, that's down. a great idea. Let's do it. Oh, thanks. Notch. Yeah. Done. <laughs> Notch is right there with you. Done. One eight. Yep. I like it. They're working on it. Are they? Are they really working on it? You know it? what else they're working on? What? Or they're not working on it, but uh, <laughs> um, MC Pro Hosting. Those guys. Those guys are the shizzle. Super awesome. I saw Captain Sparkles was looking for a new server host, and I suggested MC Pro Hosting because they've uh, oh, done us right. Um, they're actually going to have a big booth down at uh, MineCon, and uh, uh, it's going to be epic who's going to be in that booth. Might I say really? actually really awesome people too. They really help out when it comes to charities, you know, with the yeah. with the different charities that go on and stuff. They they're one of the biggest donators and also they help with the server. Yeah. So it's really cool. 
yeah they, yeah they're doing some um awesome stuff and uh we actually have a, a deal with them that if you want to get 15 uh, percent off your order you can just go to mcprohosting.com and just use the code shaft podcast and uh you'll get 15 percent off that order and uh they're great servers easy to work with they use multicraft uh and so it's it's some good stuff nice is it really good or is it just a lie it's amazing it's cake <laughs> the cake is sightings. It's so beautiful. Oh my god. It's so intense. <laughs> Did I do a good Eric impression? I Did thought it, it was gonna go <laughs> Silas. <laughs> Like in my brain, I was waiting for it, and I was like, when did we change that bumper? <laughs> and then it happened, and I was in awe. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, we have a couple links here. The first one here is a Minecraft-inspired bedroom. This was submitted by Ion Nobara. Uh, Redditor Bacon Water created a bedroom fit for their Minecrafting daughter, complete with a grass block toy chest. And the closet doors have been made to look like a nether portal. That is pretty freaking awesome. It makes me feel like a bad parent. Well, and that's just it. Like, I do you remember Jared Twing? Did you ever know him? The name sounds very. Anyway, uh, I I, he he painted his kid's bedroom to look like um, uh, the old Charlie draws, and it was all purple with like chalk drawings all over the place. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. I would never take the time to make my kid's room look that cool. You I are was just going to say something like that. You know, I would love to do stuff like that, but I just I wouldn't have time for it. But this is this is pretty awesome. And and uh, I, I'll, there'll be a link to it in the show notes. I'm impressed. They did a good job. Hooray for these parents. They're better than me. So the next one is a link. This is a guy hilarious who replaces Minecraft sound effects with his own voice. Kotaku writer Patricia Hernandez stumbled upon a sound effect resource pack by R2BL3ND, who replaced all 489 sounds in the game with ones based on his own voice. Some of them are pretty darn silly, and there'll be a download link in the article itself. Smash potato! <laughs> There's some good ones in there. That's yeah. pretty, pretty funny stuff. Uh, the next one is a link we have. Uh, I Minecraft 1337 has created an adventure map and resource pack based on the popular horror game SCP-087, The Never-Ending Staircase. The Yogscast and Verida have scared themselves silly playing it, and no wonder. The creator has made very effective use of command blocks, potion effects, and sounds to achieve the desired effects. So we will link to that in the show notes. Did you uh, did you guys see Seth Blaine made a Russian roulette table? No! It's awesome. A Russian roulette table? Uh, I think. I think. Like where you uh, shoot each table. other? Uh, or like know. a roulette it's a, table. It's a table and it does something. <laughs> like a like, yeah, like a casino roulette table. He well, uses a mine cart. It goes down on the ground into a random like he has redstone constantly blinking, so it changes the cart back and forth on different tracks, and the momentum changes where it lands on the rounded part, and you could place your bets wherever you want on the table. It's really nice. cool. Nice. I did see the Seth Bling tetherball game. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. with, with the pig. With, with the cool. pig hanging from the yeah. It's tetherball, but it's a pink. It's a pig. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> And all of this will be in the show notes, including the tetherball and the roulette table. So there you have it. What's that knocking noise? Housekeeping. Oh, it's the housekeeper. Housekeeping, mean for pillow. Oh. I love you, Brent, long time. Okay. <laughs> so... What's up, housekeeper lady? Housekeeping. I've been listening to all your podcasts. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. You've been bringing mints to all of them? I have. You've been running away from the zombies? <laughs> zombies? Oh, you maybe you haven't listened to that new podcast yet. What podcast are you talking that. about? Us? The Dead Workers Party on Seven Days to Die. I do not know that one. Well, it's a good one because it's a new game. It's in alpha, just like when Minecraft released from alpha, and and it's just like it. Like you can build and dig. The only difference is uh, the zombies are a bit meaner. 
they are pretty mean. They'll eat your face off. They will eat your face off, and they will uh, surround you and everyone. But yeah, it's basically <laughs> like uh, if Minecraft and uh, Daisy had a baby and spit this monstrosity out. Kind of like mine's ear now. Uh, but at the same time, like it, I mean, it's better. Like, like the graphics are like Warzy or Daisy. They're kind of more advanced graphics. Yeah. Uh, it's not as blocky. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's a lot scarier. Like the zombies are like. Yeah, they come and get you. It's like Walking Dead zombies. Yeah, and there's yeah. guns and ammo, and you can loot cars, and you can build, nice. and uh, they'll actually tear through the house to get you, not just the door. The yeah. Game whole house yeah and, and like you said they're the ones that you're actually giving a playstation 4 away with right no 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 that okay. this, this it was above the above the top we were actually recording that when we did the promo video yes oddly enough i know um but yeah 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 so uh, you can find it on on our dead workers on channel but it just got um uh it should be on itunes now because they just approved it uh, like 10 minutes ago sweet nice. so uh, that's awesome Go listen to it. Uh, it'll get better. The company that does the game is the Fun Pimps, uh, so you know it's going to be a fun game. And it's uh, I think thirty five bucks in alpha. So and and then we have the Dead Workers Party in October. I believe the eleventh through the thirteenth. You can go to uh, deadworkers.com and click up under events. You'll see DWPP. The hotel is listed on there that uh, everybody should stay at uh, if they want to stay close by yes uh we've got some codes from high res smite that they're going to be sending us to give out we're going to be running some artemis running some artemis uh tournaments for uh, minecraft buildings i think we're going to have to have a tf2 rematch uh some smite 1v1 3v3 5v5 wow uh so it should be a lot of fun and there will be board gaming. A bunch of board gaming. Card gaming. Card gaming. Computer Con gaming. Computer gaming. I might run some live action Wiz War. Ooh, people love that. Yep. Dice gaming. There will be some dice gaming. Sure. Yes. Why not? Papercraft. <laughs> Are you running it? No, I'm not going to be. What? <laughs> you could, we could stream you in. Yeah. Oh, Paradise Decay's uh, A New Hope will oh, be uh, yeah. played live on a big screen and you'll get to see our studio nice. and it's free we are charging absolutely zero you just got to come and hang out with us just and tolerate us have fun that's all that's all you got to do 80 bucks it's like it's like the con of the century but for the price of the con of last century yeah yeah something like that yeah and i i'm trying to get us some uh swag for loot bags i've contacted oh. about uh 20 have companies. you contacted loot crate I haven't. I don't like them right now. <laughs> I like their stuff. Yes. I don't like their how they do their their partnership talking. programs. Oh, oh. Would that but we be, won't get into that. Is that why we haven't been advertising them yes. for a while? Oh, yes. go figure. <laughs> yes. Ah, so if you like Loot Crate, you need to tell them, <laughs> I love the Shaft. And they haven't been advertising you lately for a reason. Why not? Maybe you should ask the Shaft. <laughs> oh, Hashtag geez. dead twerkers party. I know. I know. <laughs> dead twerkers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we would be. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, so. <laughs> so, uh, and we, we never asked you, do you have any uh, videos people should be looking for coming out this week, Silas? Uh, actually, I've been working with a bunch of other smaller YouTubers, like maybe around 1,000, 5,000 subs and stuff like that, and trying to make a group of, of friends just to get together and record, so we're, that's kind of still in the works, but I just do a lot of live streaming on my YouTube channel, and I'm really excited about Pixelmon. I, I'm, I'm a total noob at it, but I'm really excited to play episode number two, but I, I, I live stream quite a bit of it, of different things, so. Very cool. And so... Be sure to go on over to YouTube.com slash S-I-Y-L-I-S-S. -S. That's Silas. Silas. <laughs> and you can follow him on Twitter at Silas as well. And uh, give him some votes, some some thumbs ups, and follow. And uh, favorite the videos that, uh, you know, are your favorites. And we definitely appreciate all of our sponsors of the show, including the ones who uh, donated during the show. Um, let us know in the comments how you like that, how that turned out. Is it too much um, stuff? 
<laughs> I don't know. Is it too much? Is it crazy? Or was it fun? Like, I want it to be fun. Like, something different. Yeah. And not just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> something different. I, I'm, I'm reading all the things scrolling across the screen at this point in time. None of them make any sense. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pleasantly surprising. Conversely, Wes waltzes like a drunken zombie from Iron Waffle. Who would have thought it? I, I didn't know zombies could even get drunks. Silent Sam says, ha, ha, ha. I'm typing in all caps, and you can't even stop me, mods. Well, on a serious note, guys, I really do appreciate you having me here. This, is, this was really awesome being able to be on the show. Well, thanks know, for being on the show. I know Eric doesn't like me, but it's fine. Well, well. He, to be fair, he doesn't like anybody who's cool. Yeah. I he think only it, likes jerk faces and idiots. I think so it's much competition, huh? It's yeah. what you did to him at PAX. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. Yeah. But that's okay. We'll do like a, a he tried to get north the, side, south side he, thing. And he tried to get going. the tailor to fix the pants, but he couldn't get him fixed. But uh, yeah. it's always been one of my dreams to be on here. It was really awesome. I think you guys deserve so many more views and subs, to be honest, with what you guys do. You guys do a great job. So. Well, thank you. Well, we agree, and uh, it's in your power. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Because any week now, you will have more subs than us, so... <laughs> Remember us. <laughs> Remember <laughs> us. Yes. Yes. There will come a time where you will be like, I am on top of the world. Wait, what about those guys? And we'll be like the Godfather. Silas. <laughs> Silas, <laughs> you remember. So everyone knows, directly after this, I'll probably want to do a live stream. You guys are more than welcome to be involved. I'll probably go on like Hypixel or Hype server. So. Very cool. So everybody head on over. Yeah. I'm so excited. And check it out. You've been a great guest. Like, you've got lots of energy, and, and you're not afraid to talk over us, which is always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really don't realize how important that is. So many people are like, I didn't, I didn't know when I was supposed to talk. Am I supposed to talk now? And I'd be like, you're supposed to talk when you talk. You know, that's the way it works. I appreciate it. It's awesome. So, yeah, have a great weekend. You too. Congratulations, you made it through The Shaft Alive. See show notes and leave comments for this episode at theshaft.deadworkers.com. Send questions, comments, and audio to theshaft at deadworkers.com or leave us a voicemail at 256-812-1010. Dead Workers Party Network. Don't be vague. Ask for The Shaft.